the most basic part of this whole catapult is going to be a structuring frame. The most important part of the structuring frame is going to be this box right here. And this whole purpose of the box has two purposes. The first one, not as important, it kind of provides like a pathway for the tennis ball to shoot through. The other part is it kind of holds everything strong and sturdy for the tension ropes, which we'll get to later. But by having these outer ones and inner ones, it keeps everything where it is and not from collapsing. All right, so the second main part of the catapult is going to be the pathway in which the tennis ball travels. We have it set, the wood, at a 20 degree angle. Um, we lined it then with a PVC pipe, that way it's easy travel for the tennis ball. And then the object that we have to hold the tennis ball in place is going to be this light bulb screwer inner, because after trial and error through cups and wood and all that stuff, this went to the best. All right, so the main thing that makes this whole catapult work is tension. How it works is up here, we string a bunch of rope up and down, and then you start twisting it as much as you can, and then you get a big strong man to twist it even more. I'm not doing it. Preferably African American. <laughs> and then what that causes, this piece of wood right here now wants to dig in to our support frame. So when you pull this back and eventually let it go, it snaps back in place. So how it works then, we take a string, we attach it to this piece of wood, to our lovely light holder, and when we pull the light holder back, the wood comes back. When we let it go, it is going to slam back in place, sending the tennis ball away. All right, so now that we've explained how it's built, now we have to go into the physics of how it works, and we're going to be doing simple projectile problems. First, we set our catapult horizontally so that we could find the velocity of the tennis ball when it is fired. We know that for the vertical components, the initial velocity is 0 meters per second, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height of the catapult is 0.813 meters. To find time, we use the equations we were given. So, change in y equals initial vertical velocity times change in time plus one half times acceleration times x squared. After solving it, time is 0.407 seconds. We use the calculated time to find the velocity with the equation velocity equals change in x divided by change in time. So, the velocity when it is shot out is 16.77 meters per second. The next step is to find the horizontal and vertical individual velocities. We know that the angle the catapult is set at is 20 degrees. So, we use Sokotoa to find the sides of the triangle. So, the vertical velocity is 5.74 meters per second, and the horizontal velocity is 15.75 meters per second. Here, we are trying to find the total distance the tennis ball will go. Using the horizontal and vertical velocities we just found, we calculated the change in time using the equation final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times change in time. From this, we got a time of 1.17 seconds. Then, using the equation velocity equals change in x over change in time, we calculated our change in x as 18.4 meters. So now we will find the k constant of the string. Using the energy formulas, kinetic energy equals one half mv squared, and the potential energy equals one half kx squared. We know that the energies will equal each other due to the conservation of energy properties. We measured the mass of the tennis ball to be 0 0.0585 kilograms. The velocity is 16.77 meters per second, and the distance we pull the catapult back is 0.356 meters. Once this equation is set up, we solve for k, and it is 129.8.